Let's jump Total War here, and today we've got a rating your one woman doomstack playing as Daughters of the Forest with Tsarina Katarin going up against Sylvania, where they're bringing four full stacks against us. Some low tier stuff, high tier stuff, and single entity monsters, which are insanely dangerous for Katarin, because she's very good at anti infantry, we all know that, but she's not good at dueling single entity monsters. We've got access to some blessings here that mostly do the same thing, but I'm going to go with this one here for the extra ward save. Pop that in there. We've also got some curses, but I'm not going to use them, because obviously popping down fragmentes on them will make it pretty easy, because it'll basically eliminate them. So I want Katarin to actually have to deal with them at some point in this battle. So let's go in and see what we can do. Because, yeah, if we just use the curses to get rid of their most dangerous units, that obviously works for if you're playing um, as Daughters of the Forest, but that's not really going to work at all when playing as the other ones. Now, of course, the buffs that we're getting from here, these are mostly just stat buffs. So she's obviously stronger in the Daughters of the Forest faction, but it's not like she can't do this. Well, it depends on how well she does it. Like, if we end this battle here and she's at full strength, then we probably didn't need the banner. If we have a look at her resistances, she's got 40% ward save, 40% physical resistance. But when we start the battle, she'll get an additional 10% ward save because the, uh, the what's it called, this blessing here, that applies at the start of the battle, which we can show as soon as we hit this. We can see that, yep. So she's got maximum physical resistance and 50% uh, resistance against magical weapons. Okay, let's go in there. I'm going to hold off on using Fire at Will to begin with, because I really want her to be saving that for the single entities later down the track, because she can't beat them in melee very well. Okay, we've got a lot of Winds of Magic, which I'll probably have to rely heavily on Death Frost. We can charge through cavalry, no problem. So don't have to worry about them. I'm only worried about the single entity monsters. Didn't go through her equipment, but she's got, obviously a lot of really good equipment, but she's got something for um, regen. And she also has the Mirror of the Ice Queen, which is an arcane item, really good for her, which basically turns her into a Mortis Engine. Okay, now with Death Frost, what should we use it on? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a nice big blob over there, let's go. Now, if it's just a whole bunch of melee infantry here, we probably could just sit in melee. Don't need to constantly charge through. Because they're not really going to hit us. And this will do loads of damage because of the Mirror of the Ice Queen. Hmm. Interesting. She definitely has it. Where is, there it is. Yeah, enabled if in melee. Well, she's definitely in melee, so... Why are they not being affected by it? Oh, wow, look, they've done three damage so far. That's weird. Yeah, there it goes. It's working now. Maybe it's just a little bit finicky because she's got a very weird hitbox. Plus, if we get into melee underneath these Terror Geists, we can do some damage with Mirror of the Ice Queen. Now, Mortis Engines tend not to be able to do very much damage to single entities, but it's still free damage. But the problem is, they'll just regenerate it straight away. So that's a bit of an issue. So, we're playing on very hard battle difficulty, with very hard cheats. We can prove that by looking at leadership. Yeah, combat modifier, um, difficult to modify minus four. But it's only on very hard campaign difficulty, which as far as I'm concerned, these tests, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be on legendary difficulty. So, she's already gotten quite a few kills. But really, once they all get blobbed up in one area, that's when she'll really start getting loads of kills against infantry. Now, the Vargulfs 
are a little bit of a concern because they can regenerate while in melee, and obviously the Mirror of the Ice Queen is not going to do that much damage. Using our range, well, magic, to kill them could be quite good because we could get rid of the Terror Geists if we get rid of all other ground units. Because the Terror Geists are going to be the biggest problem because we can't charge into them. Her biggest asset is charging. Because obviously they... They land when they want to fight us, but I can't charge into that. Oh, hang on, let's draw it away. Oh, this this could work. I'll draw it away, let it land, and duel them one at a time. Because yeah, the rest of them, they're more interested in getting organized here. And we could use Guardian's Call 3 here to... Okay, I'm going to have to suck up a bit of damage. Come on. Bloody derpy ass game. Okay, there we go. They die. And that way we might be able to kill this without actually using any death frosts, which would be good. Because yeah, they don't seem to care. So yeah, let Katarin tank it. If you have a look here, it is not doing much damage. Okay, they definitely care what we're doing here. Alright, if that's the case, if they get over here, we're probably going to want to kill this fairly quickly. Let's start using the death frost against it. The reason why we want to do it now is because it's got a lot of damage. And if we kill it quickly, it's not going to be able to regenerate it. So the faster we kill it, the better. Good, look how quickly we're killing this one. And I don't think that is necessarily from the, um, the sled. It's already crumbling a little bit. Keep it in melee. Not that concerned about how much damage we're taking from them. We've just got so much resistance. Kill us quickly. Okay. I reckon... Wow. Okay, cool. One of them gone already. Without having to really spend that much Winds of Magic. Because normally we probably would have taken like 10 Death Frost to kill that. So that worked out pretty well. But I only get one of these. So... It's like the one only one I'll be able to do for that. Because I really want to pop down Heart of Winter when there's a big blob of infantry. However, the infantry is not a concern. It's just the, um, the single entity monsters. And we need to use Death Frost to get rid of them. She definitely got you on Bow's trait. Because normally it would be like Nine Winds of Magic. Do you know what would have also been good? I can tell some of the traits that I think that she got. She definitely doesn't have Throg's defeat trait. I think she's got Throts. But Throg's defeat trait could have been good for the anti-large. Same thing with defeating Nakai. I don't expect her to have done that. Nakai doesn't usually hang around that long in a campaign. Usually gets wiped out. At some point. You gotta go all the way to Cathay, other side of the world. Which is a, um... A sea lane, I guess you could go to. Alright, we can maybe do the same thing. If, if, if it's just this one Strigoi... Lure it away, then that could work. But it kind of looks like the other ones are going to be coming in fairly quickly. And this Strugoi has got a lot more health than the other ones, a lot higher stats. And regenerates way quicker because it's got the hunger. And we don't have this one here. So I've got to be sure that we can kill it before we start using this. I don't think it's going to have extra regen cap. I'm just not sure. It's level 30, 50. The queen marches. Yeah, they're all coming for us, so I don't think a duel with that one's going to work. I think we need to try to army loss that. Maybe later. Or maybe I'll do that later on, just not right now. Let's get back over there. Like I said, fighting them one at a time could probably do that. Find them all at once. Even with all the resistances, they'll win. Good. Plow through them here. Now, this one here has got Master of the Dead. Okay, it's not currently active because the way it works is it needs to be nearby units that die. But if it gets charged, all you have to do is go into melee with it, and it resets it. But, you know, doing a bit of a hit on it every now and again. Killing that is definitely going to help. Because obviously we need to be focusing on trying to get the army losses. And their infantry... Like, all these zombies, they're just not worth much. Okay, 
Good, getting tons of damage in there. And yeah, even plowing into Black Knights, no problem. Look at that. Killing the cavalry units as she's going through there. Banner of Swiftness basically crucial for this. And if you get the Banner of Swiftness, you're pretty much at maximum speed boost. Because I think the way it works with speed boosts is that whatever their base speed is, which I think for this one it's 90 or 100, um, you can boost it by 50%. After that, it won't get any faster. Okay, this one seems to be just focusing us where the other ones are not. But if I'm going to do this, I need to focus on it. Let's duel it, and see how it goes. No magical attacks on it? Okay. So that charge did a fair bit of damage. And he's not really doing much to us. Yeah, it's regenerating faster than we can dish out damage. Alright, I was thinking about using Death Frost, but considering how pathetic that attack was, I just don't see the point. Not right now. Wait for a better opportunity. Because we still do damage to it every time we just drive by and it's close by. Just due to the Mirror of the Ice Queen. And I'm just not sure if that's the unit I want to use it on. He might be sitting there thinking, but you got 164 wins of magic, that's heaps! Mm, not really. Not really. Not for uh, Death Frost. Alright, I'm leaning towards taking out some of these Vargals, because I'm constantly charging through and they're getting in my way. So let's start with this one here. And let's kill it. Now, it's okay if we charge into it. As long as we don't stay in prolonged combat with it. Where it'll regen. Keep focusing on those Death Frosts. I can tell that when we're charging into it, we are doing some damage. She's got a really high charge bonus. It's just that her overall weapon strength, it, it doesn't... Uh, it definitely doesn't do 600 damage when you charge into a monster. It's more like 100. Just because it's got tons of splash damage, which spreads out that damage across multiple units. Which is what makes it great against infantry, because if you're doing 100 damage and you charge into a unit of, say, Crypt Ghouls, they've only got about 100 health, so it kills them straight away, one charge. Another thing is that killing this guy here, give him a leadership debuff, he's slowly going down. I think he's got the hunger. So we're getting little bits of charges on him every now and again. Got 700 kills so far, it's good. You can see the AI is sort of breaking down a little bit. They've got units all over the place just standing around. It's because they don't know what to do. And even if there's a huge block of units, you can usually push right through. Like I said, really weird hitbox. Very high acceleration. I reckon that this mount is going to get nerfed pretty soon. There might be a hot fix in the next week or so. I'd be very surprised if something isn't done about this. Because, like, this is the kind of stuff that got, I think, in multiplayer. Um, Kislev is currently banned because <laughs> it's so powerful. Like in, uh, like, uh, the, um, the more competitive multiplayer scene. Not in, like, quick battles. But yeah, if you do quick battles, you'll probably most likely go up against someone playing Kislev with Katarin. <laughs> and you won't be able to do much about it. Bring guns. Good, this one's just about going down. So yeah, we use our magic to take out the units that we struggle with. And everything else can be killed very easily by just charging into them. 
Mirror of the Ice Cream was an excellent choice. Getting you on bow straight, also very good. So currently done 137,000 in damage. I mean, if we got a big blob together and did a Heart of Winter, Overcastle, that is so much damage, but we can get two or three Death Frost for one of them. I just think that's more important, considering just how e easy it is to take out this imagery. If we have a look at them, like, they, they can't do any damage. They can't land a hit on her. Even if they've got the um, ability Charge Reflection, that doesn't work against this for some reason. Just because of the weird hitbox. Because Charge Reflection still requires them to actually do their attack animation, and they just find themselves unable to do it as long as you keep moving. If, obviously, if you sit there and stay still, then yeah, it'll work. So, having a look at these Black Knights, they've done... Actually, they did a... No, it's only one. 9 damage. <laughs> I mean, they're anti-infantry, but still. Just can't do any damage to it. Alright, is that one going to start crumbling? If I can charge into it and just get it to break by hitting it in its ass, Okay, it, it, hang on, it just started crumbling. Just let it... Yeah, if you can plow through the sideways through a unit, through the flank, that's really good. Good. Alright, that's one Varg guys, uh, Varg wolf down. They've also got these um, Varg guys up in the air, but we're killing them fairly easily just with um, Mirror of the Ice Queen. We definitely don't want to stay in prolonged combat with them. In my own campaigns, I tried out uh, Katarin against a bunch of trolls, and she beat a unit of trolls, but she lost like half her health while doing so, because I couldn't just cycle charge them very easily. I mean, you can, this is not easy to do it. I stayed in prolonged combat to test it out, and she didn't do that well against it. And in my campaign, I had Throg's defeat trait, so we were having anti-large. The problem's not with her melee attack or her damage, it's actually the animation. She's not good when she stands still. She has to keep moving. It's kind of like speed. <laughs> She's totally useless unless she is constantly moving, which is very easy to keep her moving due to her massive acceleration. They base in order to pin us down, they need to completely surround us with the terror geists. So this is kind of pointless as well, because they're not connecting with us. Like, getting the extra melee defense when they're not hitting us is not going to do anything. That's why I'm not focusing on it too much. Good. Look at that. Look at that number go up. Okay, that guy's got a little bit of intensity, so that means he's able to heal just a tiny little bit. So all you have to do is touch him, and that'll turn it off. Yeah, actually, I'm not sure about that. Alright, still got a little bit of reserves left to charge up. Maybe I didn't properly connect with him. How many reinforcements left to go? Still quite a bit. So tempting to use Heart of Winter. So we've already got 1,500 kills. Which I think is pretty good for a one-woman doomstack. She's not 
killing them slowly. Especially considering I'm really trying to focus on the single entities. With the magic, at least. With Heart of Winter, we could probably get like 500 kills with a single cast. But if we use up all of our magic, kill all of their infantry, and the battle isn't won, then what the hell are we going to do? That's the thing I'm worried about here. That's why we've got to use Death Frost. Is that the last Vargulf? I thought they had three. Yeah, there's the other one. So with 164 Winds of Magic reserves, we'll get about 30 total Death Frost, including the Winds of Magic that you start off with, which is, uh, I think, 20% of whatever your reserves are. Because, yeah, normally with other chariot-type units, you could use cavalry to pin them down quite easily and then get them stuck and then just kill them that way. But it doesn't work with Katarin. Oh, that is such a nice blob. Where'd the Vargulf go? There it is. Oh, oh I cancelled it. Good, nice blobs like that are really good for her charge bonus. Get loads of kills on the charge. Good, nearly at 2,000 kills. I think we're up against something like 5,000 troops in this battle. Maybe even more. She's not going to get all of those kills because some of them are going to be stolen from us due to them crumbling. But she'll need to do a serious amount of damage to them first before that can happen. Which is why it's important to look at how much damage is done, not necessarily the kills. When dealing with vampire counts. Okay. This isn't the Vargulf I was trying to focus on, but... There it is, actually. Gotta kill them both, so let's just do them both at the same time, I guess. It's not regenerating passively, unless it goes into melee with us. And even when it does that, it gets um, Mirror of the Ice Queen. Okay, no more reserves left to charge. We've just got this 100 left. Which is still a, a fair number. Okay, charge into its rear. Hopefully we can get it to break. No, we turned around. could focus on trying to kill him, but like I said, because he's infantry, he's actually very easy to charge into and kill, and he doesn't really have that much regen. So a lot easier to kill than a Vargulf, which is why I'm not focusing on using Death Frost on him. No, that one's crumbling away. Just give it a moment and it'll go. No, don't touch it, don't touch it. It's going to regen if that happens. Oh, okay, that one's actually providing some regen. Got to put a stop to that. That reset it. No, it did not. Yeah, I've got to put a stop to it. He's nearly fully charged it up. Oh, 
I'm fairly sure you can reset it. If I could just get a connect of an attack in. Otherwise, I'll just have to kill him. Ah, the Vargold's dead. That's good. Okay, did that work? Nope. Maybe you can't reset it. Could have sworn I've had mind reset when I was playing Vampire Counts. Guess I'll just have to kill him. Because, yeah, otherwise he's going to passively heal this. And undo the damage that I've done with Winds of Magic, which I can't get back. No, you can't be healing that. That's very bad. Could use Death Frost on him, I guess. He doesn't have much health. Alright. Considering how much he's healing them, I think we got to put a stop to him. Yeah, it was one thing when it was only charged 9%, but since it's at like 70% now, 62%, I think I need to put a stop to it. Bounce of Power's improving. Probably kill him. Good. No more regen for you. Well, apart from if they go into melee, that is. Alright, we've now done 300,000 in damage. Still a lot of reinforcements to come in. That looks like the settlement garrison. Right, so that's one of the three lords that we've killed. This one is the main commander. Should probably try to focus him. I really don't want to spend magic on him, though. We'd only need a couple of casts. Still, save it for the monsters. They're the real threat. So the terror guys have so far done... <laughs> that one's on zero damage. Can't land a hit. Good, he's down to half health now. We definitely got to connect with that charge. Yeah, just one more Vargulf to go there. The Thing is as well, if we kill off all the infantry, then I'll have nothing to sort of cheese the uh, Mirror of the Ice Queen to do damage to the Terrorgrass, because eventually we will get through all their regen. Just, it takes a really long time. That's sort of like a last resort. Not what I want to rely on. So, Blood Knights, let's see how well they do on the charge. Oh, they actually... <laughs> that was not worth it for them. But they did some damage at least. Yeah, they took several thousand damage and did 44 to us. Yeah, and these are anti-large as well. That time they didn't even get a connect in. If I get this guy close to death, then I might use a death frost just to finish him off. Because, yeah, not every single charge is doing that much damage. Just because of the knockback. Once they've been knocked back, they don't take any additional damage. So this Terrorgeist here has done 48 damage, yeah. So as long as we keep moving, they actually don't do much damage to us. Good, that did a fair amount of damage. Charge through the blood. No, no, don't stand still. Keep moving. Good, the Vargeists, which have done a little bit of damage. They're almost finished. That's another monster unit that is easier to deal with because it's not a single entity monster. 
So the Mirror of the Ice Queen actually does a fair bit of damage to them, but I've never tried to attack them. But they're a unit that can pin us down. Alright, I got less than 10 more casts of this. Okay, all the reinforcements from there are spent. Must have just wiped out a whole bunch of units. Heaps of reinforcements are on the way. Another hidden. But you know, she's still at full health. It's really important to keep her at full health. If we want to army loss the remaining Terror Geists, if we've got like 10% health left, we're not going to get an early army losses. And I'm kind of relying on that here. Thirty-three thousand in damage dealt as gold value. That's good. Retribution. Done. They die. And the thing is, we do have to do a lot of micro, but it's not difficult micro. All it is is just keep cycle charging. You don't have to pay attention to any other units, so it is quite easy. Retribution. Come on, stop getting stuck. I think they're trying to reorganize with them over here. Alright, so there are still five terror guys up in the air. Gotta be mindful of. That was a nice charge. I think we got a double hit on that one. Yeah, we don't need to use Death Frost to kill this guy. Now, I'm a little bit concerned with the remaining magic that we're not going to have enough to kill off a single unit of Terror Geists. But if we were going to charge it on anyone, we should do it on the Strigoi Ghoul King. Since he is by far the most valuable yes. that they've got. The queen okay, that unit there should be gone now. Yep, that's going to decay. Alright, with the remaining magic, I really wanted to pop down a um, Heart of Winter, but I do think I need to take out this guy. And kind of waiting until the end of the battle before I do it on them because we could keep doing the um, mirror of the ice queen on them. Maybe I should try to get rid of him first, so maybe I can cause leadership debuffs on them a bit. That might help get them to crumble just a bit earlier. Yeah, there's no more Vargulds now, so if we take out all of their infantry, then all I have to do is avoid them, and they'll get army lost that way. Okay, so it doesn't... Yeah, I don't need to take out the Var uh, the Terror guys now. So we can do a Heart of Winter. And I think they're asking me to do that. Yeah, we can actually do it. Because all I have to do is avoid them, and they'll get they'll get leadership penalties once all the infantry is gone. Because the only thing that's no, there is nothing that's on the ground now that can cause me any problems. All right, this is what we're waiting for, and that's why we focus on the Vargulf. Oh yeah, <laughs> this speed things up considerably. Holy shit! I can still do another one of those. In fact, if I don't overcast it, I can do two. The thing is, overcasting is better with this one, because it's only one extra Winds of Magic, and it gives you 50% extra damage output. 
that's better. So close to death there. Got, let's do this. Yeah, I will overcast one more. That means it'll be the last cast of this, but just so much damage output. Get her past 4,000 kills even. Cool. Killed that lord. Nice. No army losses, though. God, look at all those units deleted. That'll bring in the last of their reinforcements, I imagine. This one here's taking some damage. Alright, that's it. That's the last of their reinforcements. Now we just need to take out everything that's on the ground and then run away from them. And then they're dead. So yeah, I wouldn't bring this up against like a Rite of Primeval Glory army. I think that would struggle a fair bit. Thing is though, dinosaurs don't regen on their own. And it's unlikely you'll find a Rite of Primeval Glory army commanded by a Lifeslan that the AI is actually going to use effectively. So it's definitely not a one-size-fits-all solutions type one-man doom stack, one woman doom stack. But yeah, most armies in the game are mostly comprised of infantry. So if you're using, if you're going up against a vampire count or dwarf end game crisis, this could be quite good, especially against the dwarfs. Although dwarfs have a lot of guns, you got to be a little bit careful about that because they will shoot at you. So we've now done nearly 6,000 kills. We'll probably get that 6,000, actually. I don't think the ambulance is too far off. I mean, look at that bounce of power. i still got my ammunition as well. I haven't been using it. Because I was saving it for the end. Because it, it is not going to speed this process up much at all. And it preserves a bit of bounce of power for us. Oh my god, why isn't he shooting? Yeah, her shots are not that powerful. Still at full health. Alright, let's speed things up a little bit. Because yeah, this is fairly easy micro, so I could definitely do it. <laughs> well, it's sped up. That's no problem. This is live gameplay, guys. This is not edited. So I'm doing this live as I speak. Keep charging in circles. Like I said, easy micro. The circle attack. Unstoppable. She's probably getting hit a little bit by the terror guys, but she's got so much resistance that it's not doing anything really. And there's the army losses, so I didn't have to worry about the terror geist in the end. And we had a little bit of magic left over. And there we go. 6,433 kills. Damn. This is one hell of a good one woman doom stack. And honestly, I don't think we needed the the blessing. I don't think. I think we could have won this battle without it. Because it didn't give her any special abilities. She already had really high resistances. They just weren't connecting hits. And then watches, of course, every single unit revives. This battle being ultimately pointless. <laughs> That's what it's like going up against a vampire count sometimes, especially in the late game. I'm assuming it's an endgame crisis.
Because they usually don't build this many armies. Yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> Half their units revive. So, looking at that, we got 6,433 kills. Damage dealt, 639,000. Damage dealt in gold value, 55,500. Very nice. Oh, her equipment. She got the Crystal Cloak. Draz's, sorry, Daz's ba uh, Brazier. So this is what's giving her regen. So she regenerates while in melee. And it also um, improves her vigor, which doesn't matter because she's got um, uh, perfect vigor anyway. Talisman of Preservation, of course. The Balalaika of the Arari. <laughs> so what does that do? Melee attack and melee defense in an area. So that's good, just improves her stats. Mirror of the Ice Queen. So that's that was the main one there. I think that did at least two or three hundred thousand damage throughout that battle. Obviously, those those few um, heart of the what's it called again? The frosts. Oh my god! The heart of the storm. Heart of the ice. Whatever it is, <laughs> uh, that one does tons of damage. The Tsarina is Marcia. And we were the attacker there. So let's have a look at her defeat traits. See what she's done. All right. So there we go, there's Throts, and you've actually got Wage Through Gore as well. Would have thought she'd have more health if she had both of those. Interesting. Yep, taking out Archeon, that's good. Of course, you want both. Sigvold, yep, and Great Green Killer. So you got all the physical resistance ones, those are critical. Not essential there. Krokgar's a good one to have, yeah, extra melee defense, make it harder to get hit. Grimgore Ironhide, not critical. Yeah, so you didn't get the anti-large ones, so the um, uh, Throg and I think Nakai. They're the ones for anti-large. Oh, and others like Rakath as well. There's actually quite a few out there to give you anti-large. So I think you did a really good job building this one up, for sure. Um, in terms of rating it, is it a 10 out of 10? Probably not. Uh, I don't think it's as good as Malice Darkblade, because Malice Darkblade, you just basically just go in against that just AFK and you'd win and come out of it full strength. Um, same thing with full powered Miao Ying, Zhao Ming, or Huanbo, because all three of them are able to regen with the Von Karstein Blade and various other ways. Um, so I'd probably rate this as like 9.4, because it's very good. I mean, you can take on most armies in the game very easily with this. It's very cheap, um, doesn't require a whole lot of effort, didn't require the Swords of Cain either. Uh, but there are some units that she just can't handle very well. It did take us a little while to get through it. But overall, really appreciate the guys sending this one in. Appreciate the effort. Appreciate you guys for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. That's the end of this one. And we'll see you next time. Later, guys.